This is Coach Lee, and I'm going to talk to you about your ex in the curiosity stage. And this is after a breakup, when they have broken up with you, and you're using the no contact rule. After the relief stage, which my previous video in this series discussed at length, comes the curiosity stage. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. The curiosity stage is the stage after the initial relief stage of the breakup. And it's when the relief of getting the breakup over with has subsided and the person is beginning to observe what's going on. Because relief is in some ways like a numbing drug. They don't really feel the breakup. And that's why after someone's been broken up with, it can be so frustrating because they can feel all this anxiety and pain and a broken heart. But the other person, the person who did the dumping, seems to be the polar opposite. They don't experience the pain. At least that's what it looks like. And usually they do experience some pain, but not nearly as much as the person that they broke up with, especially during the relief stage. But after some time has passed where you are not reaching out to them, they can experience more than just relief. They start to experience curiosity. They're trying to figure out what's going on with life. And they're trying to answer a question. They're trying to answer why. Why haven't you reached out to them? Because the arrogance of the dumper, and people usually try to deny this because most people have been the dumper in certain situations, and they will say, no, I never felt that way. I never felt arrogant. I never felt an ego stroke from this. But that's really not true if they are open and honest about what was going on. It's not that they felt an ego stroke because they're just such a terrible person or because they're a narcissist. It's because the circumstances at the breakup were that the person who wanted to break up was the one who was going to leave the relationship. The other person was staying there in the relationship saying, let's work this out. We can do this. And that is the assumption that it's how it will be because that's the dynamic that was most recent. And so they kind of assume that you will stay that way. And they assume that you will make some sort of effort to get them back. And again, that's because they feel more attractive after the breakup. When you tell someone, I know you want to be with me, but I don't want to be with you. That is very flattering. It does feel good to an ego. You don't feel good hurting the person, but it's nice to know this person wants to be with you. It's nice to know someone really wants to be with you. And then when you don't want to be with them, even though it might hurt to tell them that, it does cause you to think of yourself as more attractive than them. That doesn't make them a bad person. It just makes the circumstances something that has propped them up in this situation to where they have a false sense of reality and to where they feel the dynamics of the relationship are not equal. And that's a very bad situation to be in. And I will be discussing that at length in a future video and some in this video. So when you don't behave as they think that you would, because they know you're the one wanting the relationship. So they feel like you're attracted to them, but they don't want the relationship. So you should be acting as someone who is attracted to them. And they expect that when you don't, they ask why. Why is this person not doing that? Does that mean that maybe I'm not as attractive as I thought I was? That can't possibly be it. That's when they begin to enter curiosity. What's really frustrating about this stage is that all the stages they can go back and forth in. They can go to the stage previous or they can move faster and then come back to the stage that they're in, but they can go back and forth and that can be really frustrating. But curiosity seems that they can go back and forth from this one the most because it seems easier to go back into relief because curiosity is kind of a mild frustration. And they can just assume that they are right. They can assume that you don't know what to say or that you're just hurting so bad, something like that. And they can go back into relief and kind of enjoy it again. And they can continue to try to convince everyone that they are living an amazing life, that they're going out and partying, that finally they have reached happiness in their life now that they have thrown off this relationship and they usually want you to think that as well. Number three, this is the stage when they start checking social media. And yes, they can do that in the relief stage. And that's where some people move much faster than others. And they can go into that stage and come back out of it. Really what they're doing is they're wanting to go back into relief. And so they're checking your social media so that they can, because they want to see some sort of clue that you still want them and that you're struggling. And when they see that, they get that relief again, thinking that they could get you back if they wanted you back, but they don't. So no problem, right? And they are using social media to prove 
that there's nothing for them to worry about, that if they did want to get back together with you, that they could. And so they can enjoy this break, maybe even enjoy other people or trying out other people as much as you don't want to think about that. And there will be no consequences. And that's why it's so important to stay in no contact. No contact is the first taste that they get of consequences. And it lets them start thinking that there could be future consequences to this breakup, to their actions that they hadn't thought about, that it could actually get worse. And that's when they can go into the stage after this one. But in this stage, they are wondering if there's any need for concern. They're curious if they should be concerned and they're looking for clues that they shouldn't and they will strain at it. They will try to look at anything that you post that could make them feel like there's no need for them to be concerned that if they want you back, they could get you back. And it's not that important to them because they did want the breakup. So it's just slightly important right now. Usually it will grow in importance. They will want a guarantee that they could get you back if they wanted it. They may even ask you for that. They may even say, what if I changed my mind? And you think it would make sense to say, absolutely, I'll be right here. But what they will hear from that is, don't worry about it. There's no consequences to your actions. You can stay broken up with me as long as you want. And I will permanently be waiting on you which removes all urgency, it lowers your value, and it gives them freedom to pursue other relationships. Even if it's just, they think it's a friendship, we're just hanging out, but that's when you share facts and feelings of your life and you get close to someone whether you mean to or not, and you start to fall in love. That's why it's so important when you're in relationships that you respect each other and that you don't interact and have close relationships with members of the opposite sex because it can turn into more whether you mean to or not. And so being respectful to your partner by not being alone with members of the opposite sex, by not texting a lot with them, by not having close relationships with them, not only is it respectful, but it also shows that you don't want to put yourself in a situation where something could happen like that. And it's a great way to honor your person by saying, I'm not gonna put myself in a vulnerable situation because that would make you look bad and I wouldn't want you to get the wrong idea that I'm not faithful or loyal. The good news is that when they start to get into the curiosity stage, they will care less about other relationships. They won't be pursuing them as much. They won't be wanting to interact because their focus begins to turn back to you. It's like they're walking away and then something brings their attention back to you. So for those of you who are concerned that the longer you stay away and the longer you stay in no contact, that it might encourage your ex to get into another relationship. Usually the opposite is true because of the fact you are making such a statement by not chasing them, it gets their attention and they begin to become concerned in the next stage, which that's for the next video in this series. But right now they're curious, which means they're headed for it. They're turned around. You have their attention. They're checking your social media, or they're going to do some of these other things I'm about to talk about. Before I get to number four, get more information on my emergency breakup kit. There is a discount for the kit, a 20% discount in the description below. So you can get that. It's the emergency breakup kit at my slash E B K or the link is in the description below. It's a powerful guide to help you get your ex back. It's changed lives. Number four, when your ex is in the curiosity stage, they often check with mutual friends to see how you're doing. And a lot of times they're really careful with what they say. They don't say, do you know if he wants me back? Or do you know if she wants me back? They're not that direct because they know there's a risk that it could get back to you. And so a lot of times they will disguise it as, how's he doing? Um, I'm really worried about him or is she doing any better? And they will try to use that to get the other person to start talking and they're looking for some of those clues. And that's why in other videos, I tell you, be very careful about talking to mutual friends and people will get upset. I have every right to talk to my friends when something's bothering me. Oh, you do. It's just, there is a consequence. Every action has a reaction and that's just science doesn't matter how you feel about it. It doesn't matter if that hurts your feelings. If you talk to mutual friends, you bring considerable risk into the situation because if they care about you, they will try to help. But what happens when you have someone who's ignorant of how this stuff works? And to be honest with you, most people are ignorant about it because they don't have hundreds or thousands of cases to observe. And that's what I do. I observe cases of breakups. 
And it's amazing what you can learn when you have enough numbers. And most people don't. They have two or three, or they have some that they've observed kind of third party. They don't really know all the details, but they kind of see that maybe they didn't get back together. Maybe they did, or maybe they stopped paying attention to the situation. And so they will go to their limited history of breakups and they will try to figure out what they could do to help. And usually even then it's not based on observance. It's based on feelings. And they think, if I just tell this person how bad he's hurting or how bad she's hurting, they will become aware of what they've done. They will come to their senses because they don't want them to hurt. And maybe that'll get them back together and I'll be the hero. They want to help. Sure. That doesn't mean they're going to help. It means that they are going to try. And if they try and they are ignorant of how to really help, they could really hurt you. So for example, when your ex goes to them to ask how you're doing, maybe they see this as an opportunity and they say, Oh, she's awful. All she does is cry. She is so down and misses you. And she told me the other day that all she does is cry herself to sleep and wake up from nightmares where she's thinking about you being physical with someone else or never coming back to her. And that sounds like it could be helpful to really just let this person know how bad this is impacting you. But it, it actually will do the opposite. Most likely it will bring them out of curiosity back into relief because they realize they could get you back whenever they wanted you. All they would have to do is snap a finger. So what's the concern? They can go see what else is out there. They can kind of explore and get to know themselves or whatever excuse they gave you where they want to work on themselves. They can take their time. Plus, because that dynamic is tweaked again, whereas they were curious, maybe you aren't as low on the totem pole of attraction as they thought. But then when they find out how much you're struggling and missing them and hurting, they put you back down again. And so the dynamics of the relationship are, well, I'm more attractive than you. That's what the dumper will think. And who wants to be in a relationship like that? Most of us want to be with someone who is as attractive as we are or more so. And so the dynamic can be damaged. So that's why I tell you when your mutual friends ask how you're doing, even though you want to confide in them, one of the best things you can do is put on a strong face and say, I'm doing pretty good, doing fine. Not because you don't need to get that out. It's fine to get out though. You don't need to obsess on it or people will run the other direction when they see you coming. But I suggest that you get a neutral third party, like a coach or that you go to someone who does not know them. And when you talk to this person, you tell them under no circumstances, should you talk to them or track them down and try to tell them what I've told you. But when they check with mutual friends, it's a good sign that they are in the curiosity state. Number five, they update you on themselves. They might text you and ask how you're doing and then tell you how they are doing. That's because they miss intimacy with you. They want you to know the facts and the feelings of their life because that helps them feel like you two are close. They get to have that connection again and they may not be thinking, I want that connection again, or I want to feel intimacy again. They're just basing the feeling that they're missing as being something that talking to you would alleviate. It will feel better. That's what they feel. That's why they do it. And they usually do that in the curiosity stage or going into the concern stage, which is next. Number six is a more confusing one. They might double down. In other words, they might reach out to you to see how you're doing. And maybe you tell them I'm doing good. How are you? And they say, yeah, I'm doing great. I'm going out a lot. I'm really enjoying the freedom. I'm learning a lot about myself. And they tell you these hurtful things. And sometimes there's an element of truth to it, but also other times they want to try to see how you respond or they want to make sure that you don't get your hopes up because they kind of think that maybe that'll hurt a little bit and that you can be on the back burner in backup plan mode just in case they change their mind. And so they have the confidence as well if they think that you are really struggling to tell you something like that. And it's basically so that they don't have to deal with the drama of leading you on. They don't have to say, yeah, I'm kind of struggling. I miss you because then they think that you will start trying to talk them into getting back together. And a lot of times they don't want that drama. And so they will be very direct with you. It's so important that you stay casual, no matter what they say, that you don't show them that this impacts you a lot. And you just say, yeah, that sounds great. I'm glad you're doing well and back away from the conversation. Number seven, in the curiosity stage, they can breadcrumb a lot. They can do things where you think, I really think that this person wants me to reach out and they are baiting you to do that. They want you to help them out and to make this seem like they could get you back whenever they wanted to, 
And that's really what a breadcrumb is. They want you to do the work. Even though they broke up with you, they want you to be the one to come back, even though you didn't leave. And that's why it's so backwards to do that. When someone breaks up with you, they should do the work of getting back together, unless it was due to you cheating or being abusive or severely neglecting them. But if you didn't do anything wrong and they basically just told you some garbage, like they need to go work on themselves or find themselves or that their feelings faded, something like that, a lot of times, during no contact, they start to miss you some. They start to be a little bit concerned, like maybe they're at the end of the curiosity stage and they will want to know that you will do the work. So they'll test you a little bit. They'll bait you, they'll look at your reaction and they'll know that if they want to, if they want to get back together or they're thinking about it, that you'll make it easy on them. You'll come running. So once they are relieved that you'll do that, like maybe they click like on one of your posts, which is not a big deal. It's not worth a response because it's not direct contact. But if you reach out and text them and that's all they had to do was like something and then you do something in response that is much stronger and much more direct and interacts with them to a much higher level, like actually texting or calling them, then that gives them all the information they need and they can even go back from the curiosity stage into relief again. And you don't want to give them relief that this is gonna work out however they would like for it to. They need to be at least concerned that you could move on and that you are. Just a little bit. A little bit of concern is all it takes, but it doesn't take much to erase that as well, so be careful. Number eight, during curiosity, they can also make these super happy posts trying to get your attention, to see how you respond to it, because they want to see if you're paying attention. They want to see if you are living your life separate from them and moving on, or if you are just paying attention to everything that they do. And so they will post these happy pictures, kind of wanting to show you just how great their life is at the moment and to see if you react. Before I get to number nine, remember to get my emergency breakup kit. The link is in the description below, along with the special discount code that I'm only giving out in this video. You can go to the website, you can see the regular prices there. That's what people buy it for. But if you use the discount code in this video, you get 20% off. Number nine is frustrating. They can get angry that you haven't contacted them. And this is one of the most bizarre things. They can break up with you. You can try to talk them back into it and they can say no. They leave. They don't contact you. And then they're mad that you're not contacting them. It's really an arrogant thing to do. To think that you can break up with someone. Just break their heart and leave them. And then you're mad that they're not contacting you to make you feel validated and attractive and like they're pursuing you. It's really tacky. It's nearly narcissistic, but I see it happen a lot and people are confused. Why are they mad at me? Let them get mad. Just because someone gets mad, it doesn't mean that you made the wrong decision, especially in a breakup. Sometimes they will get mad. And a lot of times that shows you're doing the right thing. When you are strong, when you're not chasing them down and kissing their butt, a lot of times they can get mad because they want you to do that. Of course they do, it feels good. And it makes sense to them based on how they perceive the relationship dynamic and they see you as lower in terms of attractiveness. So the natural result would be that you would be chasing them, that you would be making them feel sexy and trying to get them back. And when you don't, a person who sees you as someone who serves them can get angry and it should tell you a lot about this person. Nobody's perfect. They can always improve themselves and gain insight during this process of you being in the no contact phase of this. And that's what we hope, but pay attention if this person gets angry at you for not fixing what they broke. Feel free to leave a comment asking questions. If you like this video, click the thumbs up. That's always super encouraging. And if this content was meaningful to you, subscribe to this channel so you can be notified when I have more videos like this. This has been Coach Lee, and as always, thank you for watching.